So you're learning Adobe Illustrator and you want to master the use of the pen tool. That's great. The pen tool is one of the most fundamental tools of the software, no doubt. But let me tell you a secret that most tutorials won't. You don't want to learn just the pen tool. I get it. The pen tool is a great tool. And more than that, it is a classic. But over the years, Illustrator has evolved and updated and many new tools came up. Not to replace the pen tool, but to enhance it. Knowing how and when to use these tools will make working with Illustrator something that is much, much more instinctive. You have my word on that. So what if I told you that instead of just learning one tool, today you'll learn eight of them. That sounds good. So enough talking and let's get down to business. And of course, we're gonna start with the star of the show, the pen tool. To select the pen tool, you can use the shortcut P. The pen tool is pretty straightforward to use. Each click on the artboard creates an anchor point which will be connected to the previous one. So to get started, just click once in the artboard. Notice that a blue line is connecting the mouse cursor to the place where you first clicked. This line indicates the path that will be created when you click again. Let's make our next click and now we have two anchor points connected by a straight line. And of course, a new blue line appears to indicate the next path. Straight lines alone can be used to create many things in Illustrator, just like the shadows of these mountains on this illustration. Notice how a small circle appears on the mouse cursor when I hover back over the first anchor point. This circle means we're about to close the path and finish the shape. You can also create open paths and for that, instead of clicking back on the first anchor point, you can just press enter or escape whenever you're finished drawing. And since we're talking about straight lines, I have to mention one of the most important keys in Illustrator, the shift key. The shift key is a modifier and it's called like that because it modifies the way in which a tool works. The shift modifier is used to lock or constrain movement in Illustrator. For example, holding shift while moving an object will lock the movement horizontally, vertically or diagonally. Holding shift while rotating an object will lock the rotation to increments of 45 degrees. And this works with the pen tool as well. When you're drawing with the pen tool, holding shift locks the path direction to multiples of 45 degrees, making it easy to create perfect horizontal, vertical or diagonal lines. That's also perfect for making the fold on this paper illustration in the next example. I'm just gonna hold shift while using the pen tool and move the mouse cursor until the blue line snaps in the direction that I want it to go. Hey Andy, by the way, where can I download this exercise file to follow along with the tutorial? Well, I am glad you asked, because this leads us to a very special message. This video is sponsored by myself. <laughs> The channel now has both a Discord server and a Patreon. Join the Discord so we can have a chat, meet new people and make new friends. You can also share your work, ask other designers for feedback and clear your doubts about Illustrator or any other Adobe software. The first 50 people to join the server will be granted a special role that shows that you got there before anyone else. As for the Patreon, you can now support Andy Tells Things for just $2 a month and get access to exclusive content, including behind the scenes, Illustrator exercise files like this one to follow along with YouTube tutorials, as well as exclusive roles and channels on the Discord server where you can get personal feedback from me on your projects, as well as talk to other patrons. If any of that sounds interesting, check the links in the description below. Now, back to the video. Okay, enough about straight lines because we're about to get curvy. And making curves with the pen tool is pretty easy. Instead of just clicking to create a new point, try clicking and dragging. This will add handles to the anchor point, which you can use to control the curvature of the path. Notice how the blue line is now showing us a curve instead of a straight line. And the cool thing is that the shift modifier also works with handles, locking them to multiples of 45 degrees. And that's perfect because a very common practice when drawing with the pencil is to always add the anchor points to the peaks of the curves, to the point where the curves extend further outside or inside. This way you can always keep handles vertical or horizontal, making it much easier to draw. If you make a circle with the ellipse tool in Illustrator, you can see that even Illustrator itself creates anchor points and handles this way. 
I'm going to use this technique to draw this color palette, always placing handles on perfect verticals and horizontals. Do you see how easy it is to draw like that? You don't have to guess where the next anchor point will be. The drawing itself tells you that. Ok, making curves is easy enough, especially when the shape we're drawing is made out of curves only. But that's not always the case. What if we have a sharp corner next to a curve, just like in this cloud? How do we go about that? Well, then we have to do something called breaking the handles. Breaking a handle means that each side of the handle will move independently, allowing you to create a sharp corner right next to a curve. To break a handle, you need to use the anchor point tool. But wait, I have good news for you. When you're using the pen tool, you can temporarily select the anchor point tool by using another modifier, the ALT key. By using the modifier, you don't have to stop drawing, switch tools and then go back to the pen tool. Just hold ALT and then click and drag the handle you want to break, adjusting it to the next curve. After that, just release the ALT key and you'll be back to drawing with the pen tool, right back to where you stopped. If you're getting a little confused about modifiers, don't worry. The easiest way to know what a modifier does is to look at the status bar, located at the bottom of Illustrator. The status bar always shows which tool you have selected. Notice how it changes from the pen tool to the anchor point tool when I press down the ALT key. Back to our illustration, I'll do this process of breaking handles for almost the entire path of this cloud. But when I reach the end of the last curve, instead of breaking the handle, I'm going to just delete it, since the next path is a straight line, and straight lines don't need handles. To do this, you can simply click again on the last anchor point and the handle will be deleted. Then I can finish the drawing by going back to the first anchor point. If you want to break a handle after you're finished drawing, just select the anchor point with the direct selection tool, shortcut A, then select the anchor point tool, shortcut shift C and move the handle, just like before. Another very cool feature of the anchor point tool is the ability to add or remove handles from an anchor point. Let's say you have a curve, but you need a sharp corner instead, or vice versa. Just use the anchor point tool. First, select the tool by using the shortcut Shift C. Then, to remove the handles from an anchor point and turn it sharp, just click once over the anchor point and you're done. To add handles and turn a sharp corner into a curve, just click and drag over the anchor point, always keeping in mind that you can use the Shift modifier to lock the position of the handles. I have a few examples here just to demonstrate how easy it is to work with this tool. Notice that I'm also occasionally using the direct selection tool to move and adjust the position of the handles. Because as we've seen before, if we move the handle using the anchor point tool, we will break it, making each side of the handle to move independently. And I want these handles to move together. And talking about the direct selection tool, this is one of the most useful tools when working with paths, anchor points and handles. As we've just seen, it is perfect to edit the handles of an anchor point after you've already finished your drawing. You can just press A to select the direct selection tool, then click on the anchor point you want to edit and just drag the handles until you're happy with the result. Just like before, you can also use the shift modifier to lock the position of the handles. The direct selection tool can also be used to move anchor points. And not only that, you can also do it while using the pen tool. Yeah, that's right, it's another modifier. You can access it by holding the control key. So let's say you're drawing with the pencil and you want to go back and change the position of a misplaced anchor point. All you have to do is hold the control key to temporarily select the direct selection tool, then select and move the anchor points as you wish. When you're done, just release the control key. And just like using the ALT modifier, you'll go right back to drawing from where you've stopped. Now, I showed you before how to make curves using the pen tool, adjusting handles and all that. But what if I told you there's an easier way? Well, this way is called Curvature tool. With the Curvature tool, shortcut SHIFT tilde, you can just start clicking on the artboard and based on the position of each anchor point, Illustrator will automatically create curves. This tool is perfect for creating smooth and organic shapes, but you can also create sharp corners using the ALT modifier. The curvature tool is way more intuitive to use than the pen tool, but it won't work for everything. 
Since it lacks the possibility to adjust the handles, some curves are just impossible to create using this tool. But don't worry, you can always switch to the direct selection after you're finished and adjust the handles as you see fit. Think of the curvature tool as something you use to create a basic shape and then you use other tools to adjust the finer details. Ok, let's quickly go over two tools that, even though they have their use and importance, they are fairly simple to understand. It's the Add Anchor Points and the Lead Anchor Point tools, Shortcut, Plus and Minus. These ones are pretty straightforward. With the Add Anchor Point tool, click on any part of a path to add a new anchor point. If it is a curve, Illustrator will automatically add handles to it or adjust neighboring handles as necessary. With the Delete Anchor Point tool, just click over an existing anchor point to remove it from the path. Now, you might notice that removing an anchor point changes the shape of the path. Duh, that's obvious. But there's a trick to prevent this from happening. The Delete Anchor Point tool actually has a modifier on the Shift key. And when you remove an anchor point using the modifier, Illustrator will adjust the neighboring handles to maintain the curve as close as possible to the original which is pretty cool if you ask me. This trick is actually very useful when you want to simplify a path and reduce the number of anchor points that it has. And while working with the pen tool and manually creating your own designs is great, sometimes it's better to know when to take a quicker route. And we have two very quick routes in Illustrator, the Pathfinder and the Shape Builder. Apart from a few differences, they both perform virtually the same task. They combine shapes in all sorts of different ways in order to create new shapes. First, let's check out the Pathfinder, which is actually a panel and not a tool. To open it, go to the Window menu and select the Pathfinder there. Inside the panel, we have a lot of different commands that will combine shapes in different ways. For example, we can unite all shapes together in a single object, divide them into separate ones or make an intersection. I find the Pathfinder and the Shape Builder to be exceptionally great to work with when you want to create an object that can be broken down into geometric shapes. For example, you can see that this heart is made out of two circles and one square. It's way easier to draw two circles and a square and then join them together using the Unite function of the Pathfinder than to try to draw it manually using the Pen tool. The same thing happens with this map pin icon, where we can unite a circle and a square to make the base shape of the symbol, and then use a second, smaller circle with the exclude function of the pathfinder to cut out a hole in the center of the symbol. Similarly, this leaf can be created by using two circles, offset it 45 degrees from one another, and combined using the intersect function of the pathfinder. Okay, but What's the difference from the Shape Builder? Well, for starters, the Shape Builder is a tool, which you can access through the toolbar or by using the shortcut Shift-M. Secondly, and most importantly, the Shape Builder has a way more intuitive interface, and for some uses, it turns out to be easier and faster than using the Pathfinder. But that's something you'll only be able to identify by learning both tools very well. To use the Shape Builder, you first have to select all the shapes that you want to combine. In this example, I have a lot of different shapes that we are going to use to create this cloud illustration. So I'll just go ahead and select them all, then press Shift M to select the Shape Builder. The first thing I want you to notice is that the mouse cursor has a plus symbol on it. If we hold the Alt modifier, it turns into a minus symbol. These are the two main functions of the Shape Builder, Add and Subtract. If we click and drag with the plus symbol, it'll unite the shapes together. You can see that as I click and drag, the shapes I'm selecting get highlighted. When I release the click, they turn into a single shape. If we hold the Alt modifier, then click and drag, the same thing happens, but this time it will delete the shapes. If we use the Shift modifier with the Shape Builder, things can get even easier. Holding down Shift activates a box select function, where you can quickly select all the shapes you want to unite, or if you also hold down Alt, all the shapes you want to delete. Just be careful not to select anything you don't want by mistake. Well, I hope you got some valuable information with this video. If you liked it, then you might also enjoy this one that's on the screen right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day!
Bye.